Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a lesson for class 6, Enchanting English. The name of the lesson is Pinch of Salt. Before we start the lesson, I want to ask you something. Has it ever happened to you that you sat to have your food and the first bite of your meal was not so tasty or was tasteless? The reason being there was less salt or no salt. What happened then? You took a pinch of salt and sprinkled it on your food. The food was tasty again. That has happened with all of us. The food that we eat is obtained either from plants or from animals. But have you ever wondered where does the salt come from? Want to know? Let's find out. Sprinkly salt. Salt from sea to cellar. If you have ever been to the seaside and had a swim in the sea, you'll know that seawater is very salty. In fact, this water, which comes from the Atlantic Ocean, is actually 3% salt. Here at this salt factory in Anglesey, which is an island off the northwest coast of Wales, they make sea salt by extracting it from seawater so that people can use it when cooking food. To make two tonnes of sea salt, first, 20,000 litres of seawater are pumped from the sea through these pipes into this huge holding tank at the factory. Did you know that 20,000 litres is enough water to fill a swimming pool? Next, the seawater is filtered to clean it of any sand and seaweed before it is pumped into this evaporator where it begins to be heated up. As the seawater is heated up to boiling point, steam rises off it. The steam doesn't contain any salt, so the remaining water becomes even saltier. Once enough water has evaporated, it is pumped out of the evaporator and into the blending tank, where different batches of seawater, which are now called brine, are blended together so that they have the correct percentage of salt for the next step. The amount of salt in the brine is called its salinity. The salty brine is then pumped into these shallow tanks, which are called crystallizers. This is where the salt crystals will form. The salt harvester stirs the brine in a figure of eight shape like this, to ensure it is well mixed and the water in the brine evaporates evenly. As the crystals start to grow on the brine surface, they eventually get too heavy to float and sink to the bottom of the tank. When the salt crystals have finished forming, the harvesters gently scoop out the flakes and place them in these plastic trays. Next, they rinse the crystals until the right texture and degree of sparkle is achieved. Then the piles of salt are put into low temperature ovens to dry. A very small amount of moisture is left in the salt because this helps to keep it crisp. When it is ready, the salt is weighed and bagged up, then packed into boxes and jars, ready to be sent all over the world for people to use when cooking their food. Well, now we know where the salt come from and how it is made. Let us see what the chapter has for us. History of salt. Salt is one of the oldest mineral known to human beings. In ancient times, salt was highly valued and its production was controlled by law. It was used as a means of trade and money at various times and places. Salt has also been used for thousands of years for seasoning and preservation. Salary, salarium, sal and salt. The word salary comes from a Latin word salarium which has the root sal or salt. In ancient Rome it was the term used for money allotted to Roman soldiers to buy salt which was expensive but essential commodity. When a soldier did not do good work his salary was cut. This is how we get the expression 
not worth his salt. How is salt extracted? Well, we just now saw in the video the man-made process of extracting salt. Well, there are natural ways also. Solar evaporation is the oldest method of salt production. Salt evaporation ponds. Salterns are built along the coast. Sea water is fed into ponds. Natural evaporation of water due to the action of sun and wind leaves behind salt crystals. Now the raw salt is washed, dried, shifted and graded and then packed as required. Natural and man-made salt pans. We just saw the man-made salt pans, yes? Natural salt pans are different from man-made salt pans. Naturally formed salt pans are expanses of flat land where the surface is covered in a hard white crust of salt and other minerals. These are mainly found in deserts and the other arid regions where larger water bodies have dried up over thousands of years leaving behind salt and other minerals. Well, edible salt is not the only kind of salt. We also have rock salt. Rock salt mining is extraction of rock salt present in the rocky underlayers of the earth's surface. Once it is brought to the earth's surface, it is processed and used for industrial and other non-food purposes. Do you know children, miners prefer working in salt mines because they are among the safest and also the most comfortable of to work in. Well, by name itself, you know that vacuum evaporation is the process in which salt is heated in large containers called vacuum pans. If you check a packet of salt, it is mentioned on it that it contains iodine. Well, what's iodine? Iodine is an important mineral used for growth of our body. If we have less iodine in our body, it causes major diseases like mental retardation and goiter. So the simple solution was to add iodine to something that everyone consumes regularly. Hence, iodine was added to salt. Well, any guesses? Who is the famous personality shown in that picture? Yes, you guessed it right. That is Mahatma Gandhi. But what is he doing? I'll tell you. When the British ruled India, they imposed a salt tax and salt law. According to the salt law, Indians could not collect, make or sell salt. This led to an increase of price in the salt and poor people were not able to buy it. Anyone who disobeyed this law was imprisoned. Gandhiji found this law very unfair. He organized the Dandi March from Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad to Dandi, a village on the coast of Gujarat. On 6th April 1930, Gandhiji picked up some crystals of salt and pledged to make India free from British rule. For breaking the salt law, the British put Gandhiji and his followers into prison. I hope you have understood the lesson well. I have shared the question and answers in this video. If you find it difficult writing the answers on your own, you can read it and then write the answers in your notebook. Let us talk 
about grammar now. Idioms. What are idioms? An idiom is a word or phrase which has a different meaning from its literal meaning. For example, get off my back. It's an idiom which means stop bothering me. You hit the nail on the head. This also is an idiom which means you're absolutely right. We also have food idioms. An idiom which has mention of a food item in it. For example, take everything you read in that magazine with a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt? Isn't that the name of our lesson? Well, that is an idiom then. It means do not completely believe on what you read in that magazine. Now children, when you have read the lesson, after the lesson, you have a set of idioms there with their meanings. I want you to read those and understand the meaning. Once you are able to understand the meaning of the idioms given there, you will be able to do this exercise which says fill in the blank with suitable idioms for the, from the list given below. This is your homework. You are going to do this on your own. Studying about Saul was interesting. Well, amazing things are still left that you can do with salt. I am going to tell you one. Rest you will read and try on your own. Salt helps remove the smell of garlic from your fingers. Mix salt with lemon juice and rub your fingers with it and you're sorted. I hoped you liked it. Here I am sharing with you links of few uh, stories which are interesting short stories based on salt. Do have a look at them in YouTube. With this, we come to the end of our lesson. I hope you have understood it well. Before going, I want to thank you for being attentive.